Hello everyone, um, today's topic, time travel, let's learn from the history of Python packaging. Uh, so let's start from inter my introduction. Uh, my name is Kurt Cho, and sadly I can only join this time uh, remotely because of the COVID-19 outbreak. And briefly introduce myself, I'm a PyCon speaker uh, in Taiwan since 2007, and I'm also a PyCon speaker in Japan since 2019. And this talk was given in PyCon JP this year in Japanese, a uh, few days before. And I'm currently a uh, Amazon search software development engineer. And you can find my information in the right hand side things. OK, uh, moving on to the agenda. Uh, today's agenda I will basically talk about the motivation and later uh, the first part, the history of Python software distribution and learn from it. And the next part is the challenge before and after community solution. And finally, it's a takeaway. I will probably have no time to cover the appendix part. So uh, after my talk, the slide will share uh, somewhere so you can check out those uh, appendix there. So firstly, talk about the motivation. I personally have two motivation to give this talk. Uh, the first one is uh, one day, so in my company, uh, our builder tool team basically announced let's migrate to idiomatic tools. So in this sense means that uh, before uh, we, we, we use some internal company internal packaging tools, but now we move to, uh, let's say, PIP or those popular community-based solutions. And for people who work in some historical big company, you might have experienced like when you onboard a new comp onboard to the company, uh, you need to spend a quite a big amount of time to uh, learn learn the company internal build system to learn what's going on there, and those external knowledge wouldn't work in inside those big uh, internal system. And so, in my opinion, it's like uh, yeah, great. Uh, it's it's good like uh, for 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 new hire to my company they no longer they probably eventually no longer need to spend that amount of time to learn those uh, company internal tool for their maybe first few weeks to months and then but the thing is the the other up upside thing thought is why I mean what, the company have a comprehensive internal build system and then why do we need to move to idiomatic tools that's the first of my motivation. And the second motivation is uh, PEP code 566. Uh, name is metadata for Python software packages 2.1. And as you can see in the slide, this is uh, just a brief uh, metadata about this PEP. Uh, you can see like the, the date, the final day is around the end of 2007. So it's actually not really far from today. And by the way, this PEP was written by a guy called Dustin Ingram who actually also gave a talk in PyCon Taiwan last year. And he became the PSF or board of director this year. So the second motivation to me is, uh, I want to understand the background of this PEP. I also want to understand after the completion of this PEP, three years, in these three years, what's going on. So um, to finish my motivation, let's talk about history of Python software distribution. So as you can see in this slide, there's a timeline from 1991, the birth of Python 1.0. There are all, there's basically nothing related to Python packaging. And so to talk about the Python packaging at that time, how people think about this packaging problem, simply speaking, uh, we can basically say packaging just the thing I want to give my work to others, or I want to take the work from others. And that's the thing related to the essential idea of packaging, why we need the packaging. And then the next thing is, if we talk about the question in such a way, then let's concrete then into a diagram. And I will use the icon in this diagram in the following of my presentation. So the first thing is, let's talk about, talk about the gift side. When you finish a piece of core a wonderful function, maybe you just want to share that to others. So the, traditionally, what you would do is just to maybe find somewhere on the internet to pass it, right? Like pass the bin or like a gist or even GitHub. And then um, 
sometimes the situation is getting more complicated. You, you might have a, several files, and you might need to ask the people to, to have a readme file to guide the people to install your work and uh, put their work somewhere. Um, that's the, probably the situation in GiveSide, how you share your work to others. And the upside is how you take the work from others. And that's the thing also uh, si similar to the previous part. So you pass the, your core somewhere in the GIST and GitHub. And now in tech side, basically just to find out the, the piece of code and the copy the code and pass it somewhere in your local side and you can run it to get the, the, the ideal results. And furthermore, if you have a, like a compl complicated situation, there's a, uh, several files, they might just compress it into somewhere and then you find out the, the compressed file and decompress it and then follow the guide to install that work into your environment. The, the thing I want to say here is, looking at this timeline here in Python 1.0 era, there's actually nothing. So it means like there's no rule define what what's the Python packaging should look like. So basically all the rule is defined by uh, the developer, the contributor, especially if you are kind of module provider, you, you want to provide your solution to a consumer. Then the consumer basically just follow what are your guidance to install your work. That's the situation around Python 1. And let's look at the 10 years later. Uh, the 10 years later, let's look at this diagram. Uh, you can see that uh, comparing with the Python 1 timeline, uh, there are a tons of tools in you know, both sides, and also a tons of documents related to above uh, tools. Um, basically, I will talk each of them one by one in the following slide. So the key thing I would one, one key thing I, I want to mention is this utils is actually some tool developed around Python, the end of Python 1 era. Um, we have this, uh, I put this in the Python 2 era, it's mainly because uh, this utils, even we have such thing in Python 1, in the end of Python 1, but uh, before uh, PyPI, Python Package Index, and Easy Install, uh, this idea wouldn't be such popular uh, until that time, so that's why I put in the beginning of Python 2.0. Okay, lo looking at the, the first thing is, why I say uh, our first question is, uh, we don't have a, a way to recognize a package, uh, a Python package. And so the first thing we need to do in Python 2 era is uh, define metadata. So we have three documents, PEP 241 and PEP 314 and 345. They, uh, they, are, they appeared around 2001 and three and five respectively. And also on top of that, we have a builder tool uh, based on those metadata. And in fact, uh, some of them is actually developed first and uh, some metadata are, uh, is written based on the tool itself and later tool follow the metadata to grow. But anyway, uh, we have the tool basically uh, follow those metadata. Let's take a deep look at what is metadata to make you have a clear sense of what I mean. Um, so above side, these are uh, probably everyone, if you were try the Python package, you will see these before, it's set up tools. Uh, we, we essentially any, any Python package before, uh, in Python 2 era especially, you will have a, uh, a, a file called setup.py. And in, in the setup.py, you can define a chunk of uh, whatever context there, and eventually we'll call the function called setup and put uh, metadata information inside. And then when you run the setup tools, uh, it will generate a uh, importable uh, egg file. And inside the egg file, you can find the PKG info here. And here is the PKG info. You can see this is a metadata version and the, the metadata information here. And the second thing to talk about is the, uh, now we have a definition, how, what is a Python package? And the next thing is like, oh, we have a wonderful thing where to share. Because in before, we have no place to share. People basically write, you know, just searching the search engine to find out who write a piece of code. Maybe, maybe they want the wonderful Fibonacci function. And they just search their Fibonacci and maybe in Python. But now we have a, a Py, Python package index called PyPI. And it was called cheese job in the beginning, uh, defined PP301. Uh, it was finalized in 2002. And you can see, uh, basically, uh, we 
we have a place to upload the thing, and then we also need a tool to basically uh, download the thing from the place from the Python package index. So that's uh, the tool called Easy Install. And some of you might use that before if you touch Python in in the earlier era. And the perfect thing is we have the metadata defined the Python package. We we have a place to upload Python, but you know, in, in almost the end of Python 2, two uh, era, you can see that like, uh, there's a there are tons of minor Python version there, and all, even even until the 2008, the Python 3 appears. Uh, we basically say uh, there are two major versions first plus a lot of minor version, and to solve that problem, especially for package provider, they want to share their uh, their work and they to to multiple user because the user may use a different Python version uh, when the Python growing become popular and they cannot, some production environment, they cannot switch to from one version to another version that easily. So provider basically need to support uh, multiple Python version uh, at the same time. So in that situation, basically we have uh, the two popular tool, two very iconic tool called Tux and Virtual M. And these two tools appear around 2007 and that's probably the time of Python 2 getting super popular. And also the idea until the 2011 is after Python 3 appeared. Uh, we have a thing called VEM, v v v uh, It's written in PEP 405. It's a thing basically merged the virtual env idea into Python uh, internally since Python 3.3. So, that's basically the situation in Python 2 era. You can see many uh, comprehensive solution, packaging related solution appeared at that time. And yet again, uh, another 10 years later, let's see what's going on in the timeline. So in this timeline, you can see one important thing is uh, our keynote speakers, uh, one of the solutions uh, listed here. Uh, we have uh, another tons of documents and also a tons of popular tools. Part of you might have heard some of them and part of you might also heard the, might, might probably will also listen some talk, talk about these today or tomorrow. Let's talk about them one by one then. So um, in Python 3 era, similar to Python 3 era, people also uh, try to, in community, try to develop a more uh, modern, modern metadata format. So we have actually two metadata related, uh, actually three, three related metadata PEP, but two of them are, are different. Uh, until almost the end of 2007, uh, metadata 2.1, the one shows in my motivation, uh, appeared. So let's take a look at the metadata 2.1 to see what's going on here. Uh, here's just the one example related to uh, metadata 2.1. Uh, it defined a modern format rather than before we have a, a kind of RFC A22 based uh, uh, syntax. in. PP566, they adopt a new, play, new uh, format called TOML, T -O -M -L. and as you can see, TOML basically defined below way. And remember, like in Python 2 era, we use the thing called setup.py. And setup.py, it's, it's basically a kind of idea you run a Python interpreter and to execute the setup.py. And setup.py basically based on the setup tools to build your package into the uh, whatever uh, file, whatever things you want. It can be an installation format or it can be a just a build package. Um, the, the thing is, uh, with this tomal based solution, uh, you no longer need to rely on the setup tools version. And you can use the Python version itself and to load the tomal file and the TOML file can decide the setup tools version. And that's a key benefit to move on to not rely on the setup tools version, rather it rely on your Python interpreter version. And the second thing people might ask me is, uh, why do we choose TOML? Why, why, why this format? 
Uh, I, I will say I searched a little bit and I actually didn't know the reason behind this. However, uh, in Rust, this is, TOMO file is also the, the format adopted by Rust, uh, the, the Rust packaging tool called Calco. And as, as some of you might know, Rust is a, a new language appeared since 2015. So it's pretty new language. Why they choose the TOMO format? And according to the community, they say uh, because Rust is, uh, they consider this TOMO format can be used for any packaging problem now and also in the future. So that means that uh, that's the reason they choose TOMO. And following TOMO in Python 3 era, there are also uh, different type of concrete uh, documents related to Python packaging. So unlike Python 2, a lot of things is under discussion. Python 3 concrete then. For example, in this page, we show the version and the dependency. So basically, they have a definition of a version identification. And also the dependency resolve definition related uh, associated to which version you should use based on what syntax, what format. And so we have um, PP3A6. It was suspended, but uh, suppressed. But uh, we also have some tools associated with that. Some of you might use that for resolving your dependencies. Uh, it's called PIP tools and PIP sync. And follow, following that, we have uh, PP440 and 508. They both define the concrete, uh, the, the, the rule and syntax of the version and dependencies. And furthermore, in the install, installation side, uh, this, the most uh, famous install, installer you, you must have heard before is the PIP, appear at that time. And we also have a published tool. Uh, some of you might heard part of them. Uh, I think the twin is the most popular solution now. And the uh, Python package index also has some improvement. So we have a PYPI warehouse. It's kind of seen to make the Py, uh, Py package index more friendly to others. You can search the, 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 the reason why they, they have this turn and what's the purpose of that. And furthermore, uh, we have the definition of the database and wheel. Uh, so database definition I was showing next slide was that, and we all also is an installation format. And looking at the slide here, we can see we have, uh, you can import a thing called Pikachu resources. And in Pikachu resources, you can call a function like, uh, I want to see which distribution this package support or platform this package support. And we also have the wheel format. It's unlike the uh, egg, egg file. A wheel format is basically just this installation format, rather it's not importable. So um, until here, you might think like, okay, Python packaging history is just so comprehensive, we have almost everything. What, what's missing there? Yeah, one thing we do want to see is a thing called one for all solution. And that's exactly one of the topics this, today's keynote talk about, uh, Conda and the PIPF and poetry. Those new newish modern solutions try to solve the problems. I want to deal with build size problem and the uh, uploading problem, publish problem, and the install problem, and even deploy problem, and try to resolve everything through the isolated environment, virtual env. That's the overall of the Python packaging history. And let's talk about what we can learn from history. So I was basically concrete into, uh, we can look at the evolution of history to see what's going on. Firstly, in Python 1 or Python 2 and Python 3, this is people basically talk about what is a Python package in the beginning. And so that's why we need to define metadata schema for that. And following that, we, we, we have the definition of metadata, we need to have a build tool for that. And after build tool, uh, we need to think about like, we build a package, where do we upload? So we need a package index and also, uh, how the pub how the publisher works, so published tool is also neat. And following that, uh, we need an installer because uh, you now publish it to somewhere and how to download it. That that's a mission of installer. And also some deployment tools help you to deploy that into your environment. And the other side is uh, Python getting more popular now, so need to de deal with a multi-platform issue because maybe some different platform user want to use that. And uh, a lot of situation, the packaging tool need to say, this package only supports certain platform. 
And similar to that problem, uh, the version also is a problem there. So that's the other thing community need to solve. All right, uh, the, the, the history you can learn from here is uh, the pattern is actually repeated per generation. So you can see in Python 1, people talk about that. In Python 2, people start to solve that and in a certain sequence. In Python 3, people start to re-talk about that again and try to solve that in a more perfect way. That's the uh, thing we can learn from history. And the following thing, uh, I will try to solve it quickly because I don't have enough time. Uh, it's a challenge before community pack Python package solution. So here, at least the two companies, one called Amazon in 1994, and the other one is called Google, start from 1998. And you can see in the, in the timeline here, there's no packaging solution around that time. So what, what that means is, if you start up a company at that time, you want to use Python with a packaging solution, you will face the same problem. How to give and talk the work, uh, take a work to or from others. And that means that like, you will need to deal with the same problem of uh, community slow in history, including build tools and publish tool and install deployment tools. And in build tools, I also need to deal with the complicated dependency resolving issue and also the multiple Python version issue. And also in the deployment side, you need to deal with the virtual environment issue because the virtual environment solution hasn't been there uh, before that. Then. And that means that uh, you have internal package metadata to define uh, your Python package, and internal build tools to build your Python package, and internal package registry because there's nothing basically you need to do that by yourself. And follow, finally, the deployment tool you also need to handle that by yourself. And it's actually kind of natural like most big companies deal with that in such way. However, you can see one thing is uh, Nowadays, third-party packages, they, they already have a really comprehensive community-based solution to define what is metadata and uh, how to deal with that in, in, in uh, publish and deployment. And then uh, in, a com in those big companies, they have their own, own solution and they need to deal with all those sort of problems for third-party package and the first-party package. And that's exactly the situation that my, my company's builder Jordan looks like. It's so exhausting, they need to handle everything in the community slow for day by day now. So uh, what, I, what I want to say here is uh, community solution actually grow faster now since, in my opinion, since uh, 2012 or around that time. It may be earlier or maybe later, I'm not so sure, but the reason why I say so is because you can think about a lot of famous published tools, uh, including Twin and uh, Bento and the uh, Fleet. They appear around 2013. That means uh, people start to consider uh, an, easy, an easier way to upload your package somewhere in the Py, Py package index. And then that means like a lot of people can start to contribute open source, and then uh, the company solution grow will be getting faster and faster, and the company speed will you know, constantly grow, but uh, surely will be slower in the community. And the other, the other key thing is uh, if you're looking at a packaging problem, not just the Python packaging problem, but the general packaging problem, looking at the build system, the publish system, and deployment system, all those questions, you know, you can remove Python in, in the question. The question will still be there. So that means that uh, every, every, almost every packaging problem for every language is similar. And so I think that probably an an answer my uh, first motivations question. Uh, I think that's the reason why my company shift to shift to community solution. And the following thing is, uh, what's the challenge after community's Python packaging solution? All right. So in my opinion, first the key important thing is the ecosystem. So if you work for maybe a company with like a 10 engineers only, and it naturally just adapt the, those mature uh, community solutions. So company just uh, maybe uh, kind of take a free ride to take a little solution, benefit from them. But while the company grow to a hundred or thousands level, then I don't think it's ideal, ideal if you just uh, try to uh, take the solution back and I use it. And I develop the solution internally, not publish back or contribute back to the community. And so to solve that, I don't think there's any single answer for that. 
Uh, but one of the idea I got recently, I, I would say, is money, the source of money. So if we have a way to trigger, uh, to get the source of money for the company, and uh, that means uh, the company will get the motivation to uh, contribute back to community. And to solve that, I think one, one obvious business you already seen these days is the call service business. Um, we basically see like a call service provider here is a company. They want to earn money from the developer. What they can do is basically uh, provide their new is the community solution. They, 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 if they develop their own solution, maybe some of them will be used, but, but maybe part of them will steer back to community need to support that solution. And the company, while the company want to make the new solution uh, friendly for developer, how do that do that is they just be a sponsor to the community and community invent a new solution back and to the and company adapt the solution later uh, release that solution in their service to developer. And uh, the other thing is, uh, Developer and community relationship is simply just one for all for one relationship. Uh, if you have time, if you have capability, you just jump to there to help the community to make the uh, community uh, grow better and then uh, provide the solution to uh, all the engineers. Yeah. And second, second challenge I'll say is if you have a more standards now, you can see more metadata, more standards now. That means uh, we, we also have a, a lot of tools based on those standards. And that generally is another challenge for people. They have way more things to learn nowadays compared with the time before. Uh, this is graph shows my uh, experience while I preparing this presentation. I heard about poetry PIPM before, and I, am use, I was using setup tools and PIP mostly. And because of this presentation, I jump in to see like uh, how PIPM solve what problem and also poetry. And I also created some project on top of them. And I also some somehow heard about one tool called Dev Hell. It's not, not yet in 1.0 released version, but uh, there's something definitely you should take a look if you have time. And I, I will probably do that later. And the other graph is just uh, one of the, the kind of feeling I got during the time I prepared this slide. Uh, there are two solutions. One is, uh, actually it's three, the, the, the other one's been a uh, twin. But I just want to mention like, uh, this is a published tool in uh, Python packaging. One is Fleet, the other one is Bento. And in my opinion, it's published just a simple problem. You need to basically point to support your URL to some uh, Python packaging index. And then they help you to wrap a lot of comments and uh, to make your solution able to uh, package able to publish to the Python package index, uh, but why they need two solution or even three solution there, I, I don't I don't understand. So that's at that time my general feeling about that. And yet again, that's a challenge. So how to deal with that challenge? Is simply speaking, uh, just to join the PyCon, just join the community. That's what I can say is because well, if you join a community, for example, this year, you can see the the Conda keynote speakers talk. You can also see some people talk about their developing experience in PIP, or even their poetry they introduced was that. Also, they share about their dependency management in, in 2020, and that's all sort of thing uh, will be given in PyCon. Taiwan 2020 this year. So that's what I would say is that during the community, you can see basically those uh, wonderful things happen and uh, resolve your confusion when you uh, deal with so many different tools related to Python packaging. Uh, finally, the takeaway. Uh, in this takeaway, I will simplify into one sentence called review the past to understand the present. Uh, what is past here means the history of Python packaging and the past the challenges uh, before the Python packaging community solution appeared, and how the community developed those solution. And then, while you're facing any current challenges, you can also think about how, what's your relationship uh, between your challenges and the community, and also how do you benefit from those things uh, people meet in history. And that's overall my talk. Thanks. I think I have 30 seconds left only. Hello, Halker. Oh, yeah. Thanks for your uh, wonderful talk. 
And uh, because I'm sorry that we don't have time left, so uh, maybe we have to stop here. And if you have any more questions, please, please go to our Discord track channels uh, to dis discuss more. And uh, let's thank Kirchhoff for his presentation.